Mexican chilies used in sriracha, Italian risotto rice, American corn that's used in just about everything. These staple crops are all vulnerable to hot weather and a lack of water. And as many countries have been hit by extreme droughts this year, farmers are feeling the heat as yields are a fraction of normal levels. Italian rice farmers, for example, are expected to lose 30 to 50 percent of their yields this year as paddy fields dry up. When you have this hot weather and drought this late in the year, it really puts a lot of stress on those plants at a really key time in their growth. And that's why some economists think that the crop yield could be stressed and the yields could go down. And commodities analysts say that those lower yields could increase prices. The string of droughts coupled with food and energy shortages and supply chain disruptions are expected to keep the cost of staples high this winter. Waterways that typically feed the agricultural systems across the world have been parched by drought this summer. Italy's longest river, the River Po, accounts for up to 40% of the country's agricultural production by market value. But water levels have dropped well below normal in recent months. I vecchi del paese, de, di tutti i paesi qua, non l'hanno mai visto. Mai, mai, mai. In France, the country has faced the most severe drought ever recorded. And during China's driest summer in six decades, water levels plummeted in parts of the Yangtze River, a crucial life source for crops. In the U.S., nearly 30 percent of corn production is based in drought-hit areas, as record-high temperatures have stifled parts of North America. It's been hot, and hotter than normal. And I think one of the key things to remember about the heat while it's been bad in a lot of places, it's exacerbating some drought that was in existing parts of the U.S. When you put that hot weather on top of the drought, that's what's really kind of the key thing here. It's the drought and the heat wave that has just been so bad this summer. And it's put a lot of stress on farmers. Our yields are off. Our yields are probably off 25 percent. A lot of ranchers are having to reduce or, or liquidate their herds. All these things compounding could just be a decision for a farmer to have to call it quits. Drought affect uh, prices first, let's say, at local level. So let's say uh, for tomatoes that are produced I don't know, in, here in Italy, so they will be more expensive if they, if they, they have a, let's say, a reduction in the production. But then uh, in Europe, but also at global level, we have this interconnection in the markets. And for this, we look mainly to the bread back baskets that are the countries that produce most uh, grain. South America, Central US, uh, Ukraine, India, also China. When a drought hits one or more of these so-called bread baskets, there's less supply of staple crops in the global market, and as a result, prices get pushed up. This has happened before during drought years, like 2012. And while prices are currently lower than they were during March 2022, they are still historically high and are projected to go up even further in the months ahead. Wheat prices are expected to jump by 20 to 30 percent this year, according to research by J.P. Morgan. Those changes in costs felt by customers are being driven not only by drought, but also by the war in Ukraine and continued pandemic-related supply chain disruptions. But analysts say the changing weather patterns we're seeing this year will continue to influence key agricultural markets well beyond this summer. Scientists have forecast that there will be an uptick in frequency and severity of droughts as temperatures continue to rise. And that means economies are going to have to brace themselves as droughts can threaten global food security.